your name we honor you for who you are for in sickness and in health we will bless your name in good and in plenty we will bless your name in lack we will bless your name because you've been just that good God we want to just honor you today we want to say hallelujah to you God we want to worship you today now Jesus we thank you we thank for coming down through 42 generations and dying on a cross for us for sins we hadn't even committed yet but Holy Spirit come on Holy Spirit come on Holy Spirit come on and do your job Holy Spirit come saturate this place come fill us like never before fill us till we overflow so that we will be able to praise a true and a living God God we want to thank you for entering into this sanctuary you are welcome in this place do what you want to for as long as you need to and we will be careful to give you all glory honor and praise and we say it is so our scripture reading is coming from John chapter 14 out of the King James Version. John chapter 14 out of the King James Version. We're going to begin at the 15th verse. That's John 14 out of the King James, and it reads, If ye love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that ye may abide with you forever. How many of you want the Holy Spirit to just come? How many of you just want the Holy Spirit to come? How many of you just want the Holy Spirit to come? Praise the Lord, everybody. Can somebody shout Jesus in this atmosphere? Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, I'll say it again. Can somebody shout Jesus in this atmosphere? Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, clap your hands with us, everybody. Hey. All right. I see you standing, clap your hands, everybody. Hey!
really waiting. If you're really waiting on him, you ought to lift up a round of praise and let God know that you believe that when praises go up, his blessings come down. Some of y'all missed that this morning. Listen, I was on my way to church this morning and I was passing the airport and I began to see a lot of planes in the air and I started to count and I seen about 27 airplanes waiting and circling the airport just to land and I heard the Holy Spirit say that some of you have been in a waiting pattern long enough but that he's getting ready to clear the runway and in 2023 the wait is over that your time is now so clear for landing get ready because he's about to open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you will not have room enough to receive somebody shout the wait is over Listen, 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 I want to welcome you all this morning into this amazing worship experience here at the House of Hope. If this is your first time worshiping with us, we ask that you would just stand, raise your hand, wave your hand so that we can acknowledge you this hour. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much for worshiping with us. If you would, there is a QR code that should come up on the screen here in just a second. If you are worshiping with us online for the first time, whether in the sanctuary or online, we ask that you would just take a picture of that QR code that should come up on the screen and just download the information we want to connect with you we want to officially invite you in we want you to know that your presence today worshiping with us makes our more makes our worship experience so much more richer so on behalf of our senior pastor dr e dewey smith lady andrea smith and the entire hope house of hope church family we want you to know that our doors are always hung on welcome hinges amen Amen. Amen. At this time, I want to, we believe that a healthy church is an informed church. Amen. And so at this time, I'm going to ask that you would please turn your attention to the screen for our hope happenings. God bless you. Uh, Crystal, what's, what's going on? What are you up to? You know, we, we're supposed to be doing something here and you sitting here on the computer like, like, what's, what's going on? Well, since you asked, I'm actually looking up some information about Dr. Martin Luther King oh. and how he truly gave his life for the civil rights movement and to make sure that everyone was given the dignity and the respect that they all deserve. Okay. That's, 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 that's so true, Crystal. Yeah. And I didn't know you could even work the computer like that. I really didn't. I never seen. Don't but start. even though, even though, you know, we definitely appreciate having the day off tomorrow because we love that good Monday off. I hope everyone takes the time to reflect on the importance of all people being able to have a voice in our world and how we are actually more alike than we are different. You're right, and Dr. King particularly cared for those who are in need. The House of Hope Atlanta does also, and that's why we still want to collect donations for our food pantry. Donations can be dropped off in the narthex of our cathedral every Sunday directly after morning worship service. You know, I, I just think about like how he was willing to give up literally everything just so people could be fairly treated in this country. and. In the movement, you know, they did, they endured a lot of tragedies, a lot of hardships. And even today in 2023, we know that life can sometimes be really hard. So if you're sick, if you're experiencing bereavement, a life transition or a crisis, our congregational care team wants to assist you. Now to help, to get help, please text the word CARE to 678-201-1351 and a member of our care team will reach out to you as soon as possible. You know, I can only imagine the trauma that Dr. King and others like him endured in the fight for freedom. That kind of trauma can often can often lead to a lot of hurt, hangups, and even habits that can stem from depression, anxiety, abuse, and addiction. So if you or someone you know is dealing with them, then Celebrate Recovery has been designed to help you find healing through Jesus Christ. Meetings are held every Tuesday at 7 o'clock p.m. via Zoom. And to sign up, just call the church office at 404 
248-243-9336. Yep, yep. You know, um, I, you just think about, like, all the stuff that they went through. Like, they had probably did a lot of praying. Yes. Don't you think? And yes. probably some fasting every now and again. Absolutely. And, you know, some things only come with prayer and fasting. And just to, just so y'all know, if you didn't already know, we are having a fast right now. You bet. Are you fasting? Krista, you've been fat? Uh, no. Uh -oh. Sorry. Well, see, she told on herself. But we do have a, cra a fast that's going on right now. Our 21-day fast is going on till January 31st. All the details are on the church website, so make sure that you participate to make sure that we feel this mighty move of God right now in the new year. Also, something that you should know too, Crystal, and I don't know if you ever did this. Did you did you finish your uh, membership requirements when you became a new member? I don't know how many times we got to go through this. Because it's I, a boot camp you're supposed to go through. I did that, and I got my little certificate, and I even got a picture with Pastor with my little cap and gown on. You sure? Stop playing. Find that picture I'm so we, we're going to post I'm it and show it. the people or whatever. But we do have our next spiritual boot camp on Saturday, January 28th. All right, so we want you to sign up. Just go to the website to get details and sign up so you can take those classes that she I took. She, Absolutely. And awesome it makes class. you an official member. And she, Crystal says she did it, and I'm going to take her word for it because she said it. Oh, Thank yeah. you. Now, even though, I'm just saying, Dr. King didn't live to see how much technology would advance in the world, I have a feeling that his speeches would have probably gone viral. And he'd probably be all over Instagram, Facebook, probably be making TikToks or whatever. I have a dream. Here at the House of Hope, now we'd, we also want to make sure that we keep up with technology as well. So we have to make sure our virtual viewers out there stay connected with us. We have several ways to connect with you. If you need prayer, text the word prayer. If you'd like to be saved, text the word salvation. And if you would like to become a member of the House of Hope Atlanta, simply text the word connect to 678-201-1351. And before we even go, Crystal, did you see the, the I don't know if you, you was at, were you at the Vibe? The no, last? I missed it, this last, but I'll be at the next one. You'll be, oh, she said she'll be at the next one. Did you see like the videos and stuff? I it? did. Oh, that was vibing. It was a vibe. It was food a everywhere. Vibe. It was in there. The food it. looked amazing. The food looked amazing. It looked like they had a great time and it was sold out, literally sold out. Can you believe? So our next Vibe is actually February 5th. All right, so don't miss it. Sunday, February 5th, um, tickets on sale right now. Just go to the church website to get your tickets. It probably probably will sell out again. You don't want to miss it. Crystal's going to be there. I might even be there. And if we're going to be there, well, you know it's going to be a good a time. A party, well, a um, whole vibe. If I'm there, it's going to be a good time. Crystal will probably be, you know, if you just want to look, yeah, 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 over in the corner. <laughs> yes, but I'm going to be there, so we're going to have a great time. So make sure that you sign up today and get your tickets for the vibe. Well, we are done for now, and we want you all to enjoy the King holiday and truly, truly utilize the day to strive to treat everyone better. That's right. And until next time, we want you to all remember that life with God is better in every way. Every day, be blessed. Now, Crystal, I want you to check me out and check out my impersonation of Dr. King. <clears throat> Here we go. You ready? No, but. I, huh? Listen now. I have a, dr uh, hold on. Let me see me get my, 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 mm. I have a, no, he was a little high. I have a, mm -mm, he wasn't that high. I have, I have a dream that someday my little kids, uh, black ones and white ones and green ones and purple ones, don't they kind of. Yo kid? I, Yo little kids? I got a dog. I ain't got no kids, but he, he is white and black. So he kind of represents what Dr. King's dream for the world, that we will all be together because he both colors. You know, you see what I'm saying? Be blessed. But you see what I'm, how he is. Thank you. But you see how he is the we dream. We, thank you. He the hope and the dream of the uh, uh, thank of you. us all. Be blessed. Thank you. <laughs> well, certainly this is the day the Lord has made, and we're here to rejoice, and we're here to be glad in it. Hello, Hope Global, and welcome to our worship service today. I pray that God's riches and choices, blessings will be yours on today. I hope you've been blessed by the online worship service thus far. God is so powerful. God is mighty, and God is moving by his spirit. And, of course, this is the day the Lord hath made, and let us rejoice and let us be glad in it. I'm so thankful and so grateful that God has allowed us to do great ministry. And you've heard from, I hope, happening some of the upcoming events, the amazing things that are happening in this portion of Zion. And for that, I say to God be the glory. Because of your efforts, we've been able to take the gospel of Jesus Christ all over the world. Souls are saved, bodies are healed, and hell-bound destinies are being altered. And every time a soul is saved, 
because you invest in this kingdom, I want you to know that God credits that to your account. Uh, every time you invest in people's lives or encouraged and transformed by the power of God, that God credits that to your account in heaven. And so for that, I want you to know that you're sowing into good soil. We are making incredible progress on our facilities. We want this place to be a place of excellence. So whether you're watching online in Hope Global or whether you're in person, we want it to be a top-tier experience, one that's second to none, one that is done with kingdom quality. And to that end, help us as we feed those who are homeless, as we provide uh, emotional and mental health support and counseling to our communities uh, through our Haven House Counseling Center. And of course, our nonprofit, our tap of this house, which provide housing and shelter and clinical evaluation and detoxifications and GD training for young girls who've been victimized by human trafficking. We are now home two residences that provide housing for young ladies who've been victimized by human trafficking. And we're working rapaciously to have a house for young boys 11 through 16 who've also been victimized by human trafficking. All I'm trying to tell you is this is a place where ministry is happening and where hope is going forth. While we're doing all these ministries, we're also excited that we're making continuous progress on our campus renovation with our God First campaign. We want to continue to bring you ministry that when you watch online, it's something that glorifies God. So I'm thankful for uh, over the past several years, two years in particular, we've been able to actually repair the roofs on our facilities, uh, new HVAC units uh, in four of our facilities. I mean, in five, really, five of our buildings, including our, our, our guard uh, security building. God is doing amazing things. Our gym, our security building, they have new air. Our cathedral has new air. Our atrium has new air. And our theater and Smith Center, they all have new air. That's because of your support. New roofing, new air, major internal uh, renovations. And we have a few more large projects left that we want them to come to pass. So with that in mind, why don't you consider being a cheerful give on today and sowing into good soil. So I want you to pause now with me for a word of prayer as we ask God's blessings on our offering. God, we thank you that you're the God of miracles, signs, and wonders. You're the God who does all things well. You give seed to the sower. And at this time, we've come to honor you with your tithes and your offerings and so, Lord, receive now these gifts. Sanctify every gift and every giver. Let no one lack. Let no one have a need after giving these gifts. But multiply them and use them in your service. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, while you've been watching, I want you to consider that there are several ways you can give. Of course, you can give today by text to give. You can text the code H-O-H-A-T, H-O-H-A-T, that's House of Hope Atlanta Tithe, to the number 678-201-1351 or H-O-H-A-O, House of Hope Atlanta Offering. Same number, 678-201-1351 or H-O-H-A-G-F, God First. That's Mission 2020. That's our ongoing building campaign, our building fund. You can give to either one of those areas by texting those codes to 678-201-1351. You want to give through Cash App. Cash App is available. Uh, those who prefer Zelle, uh, those, those, the information is on the screen, how you can give. If you want to give to the website, click the giving links and follow the prompts accordingly. Or if you want to give to the P.O. Box, our P.O. Box is P.O. Box 361-499, Decatur, Georgia, 30036. Again, the P.O. Box 361-499, Decatur, Georgia, 30036. Or if you happen to be in Metro Atlanta and you want to drop it by the church office, you can bring it by Anytime during our normal office hours, just call the church, 404-243-9336. So if you've been blessed by this ministry, let me tell you something. You will never lose by honoring God. And when you give to the kingdom of God, God will give back to you. This is the Bible. Good measure, pressed down and shaken together and running over. When you give, not sparingly, but give bountifully, our God will make all grace abound towards you that you have all sufficiency in all things, that you can abound to every good work. So today, I pray that God's going to bless those who give. Those who don't have a job, I'm praying that God's going to give you resources so you can take care of your needs, provide for your family, and also make a contribution for kingdom building. I believe that, I decree that, and I declare that. I, ju I want you to receive and believe it with me. To God be the glory. So sow your best seed on today. And we thank you in advance. And may God 
do great and mighty exploits through your life. And may God crown your efforts with abundant success and grant you favor and peace because of your seed that was sown today in faith, love, and obedience. In Jesus' name. All right, we get ready to continue in worship. Our worship team is going to come back and bless us, and I'll be back with the Word of God. Let's continue to worship God together. Let's go back in church. Praise God, everybody. How many are ready for the Word this morning? Hallelujah. 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 For about 20 seconds, can you just, I won't ask you what to, I won't tell you what to do, but can you just fill this room with the worship of an almighty God? What a mighty God you are. What an awesome king you are. What a holy and righteous deliverer you've been. We give you glory, we give you honor, and we give you praise. Come on, I see your hands, but I can't hear you. Come on, somebody open up your mouth. If you know that it was nobody but God that brought you through that last test and that last trial, I dare you to open up your mouth and give him glory. If you know that he is the Alpha and the Omega, whatever the situation is, he's going to start it with you, he's going to walk with you through the middle, and he's going to be at the end with you. Come on, I need about 50 people to jump up on your feet, open up your mouth, forget about your neighbor, and fill this room with the glory of God. God, we love you. We appreciate you. We give you glory. We magnify you. We make your presence large in this room. We magnify you. We make you large in this room. Bigger than every problem. Come on. Bigger than every situation. Come on. Bigger than every circumstance. We make you Lord in this room. King of kings and Lord of lords. Rule and super rule on the thrones of our hearts this morning. We give you glory. Come on. Ten more seconds. We give you glory. Come on. Ten more seconds. We give you glory. We give you glory. We came for no other reason but to give you the glory. Hallelujah. 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 We honor you. We lift you. We reverence you. We give you glory. We give you our Alpha and Omega. We worship you.
You're a way maker, so we praise you. You're a deliverer, so we praise you. You're the company keeper, so we praise you. You are Jesus. You are sovereign. You are holy. You are righteous. You are just God. We give you glory. We give you glory. Let's hit again just a little bit of this. Praise him. Savior. Bless his Savior. He's worthy. He's worthy. My, 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 my. He's worthy. Somebody shout, shout, glory, glory. glory. 
up and sing glory. glory. In all things, in all things. Glory. Give him glory. Give him glory. Why? Because Jesus, Jesus. blessed Savior. Going down. Let me hear you now. If you don't mind, say he's worthy. Worthy. She doesn't work. Yes! 
last time this morning, we give you all. college passed three days after my mom in January my sister passed away in January and so January is always kind of kind of weird I'm excited about the new season but you know when you love people love your family you know you have those triggers and those moments things that kind of take you back and you know where your pe your loved ones are it's not that you, you have grief because of where they are. You know to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So we've had those feelings of melancholy, not because of where they are, but because of where they are not. Yeah, I know, she's, I know my mama's with the Lord, but she ain't here with me. So I'm glad she's with the Lord, but I'm saddened because she's not here with me. Maybe that could be selfish, whatever you want to call it, but it goes through that. And... Uh, and uh, my nephew got shot a few days ago, uh, five times. The, brother, the son of my deceased brother in January, you know. Uh, and, um, and then late Friday night, my sister I was asleep in her house, mind her own business. And, uh, Unbeknownst to her, a uh, police officer got shot, and as they were chasing the suspect, his car hydroplane. So he was going up to 80 miles per hour in his car hydroplane, and uh, my nephew had just bought a car, her son, and left it in her driveway because he didn't have room for it at his house. And the car hydroplane and hit his car before going into her house the house literally sitting in her living room and the investigator said that my nephew who just bought the car two weeks ago he's a car dealer had the car just sitting at a house that if that car had not been there that it would have been a direct impact on where my sister was sleeping and that she would not have made it out alive my nephew was complaining about the car he bought 
and wondering why the car got totaled before he could sell it. And the investigator said, thank God that you had something in the middle to block the blow. If the car had not been in the middle, it would have been direct hit and your mama and your sister would not have made it out alive. And I just heard the Lord say, you all thank God for the man in the middle. Because the blow that you and I were supposed to have taken, he took it for us. And if it had not been for the Lord, who was on our side. So I got a reason to praise him this morning. Don't you, don't you let the enemy steal your job because of what you don't have. Praise him because of what you do have. You got help. You got strength. You're alive. Stop complaining about what you lost. And let everything that have breath praise ye the Lord. Look at your neighbors. I got a reason to praise him. I got a reason to praise him. Hallelujah. A reason to praise him. He's still boxing. So I'm here today because God kept me. Uh, my, my, my. God blocked it. Amen. Get your Bibles. Turn to the book of Genesis. I feel God here. I feel God here. I don't know who that's for, but don't you let melancholy, uncertainty, ambivalence, and indifference take your praise. Because the victory is in your praise. I said the victory is in your praise. You give me half an hour, I'll be out of your way. Genesis 8, 22. Thank God for our ministers and preachers and all of you deacons who are here and all of you leaders and all of you who are in this room, online audience, Hope Global. Hey, it's good to be here. God is so good. I want to thank our praise team for just setting our hearts aflame this morning with worship. Thank you, Darius, for letting the Lord lead you. He's worthy. Genesis 8, 22. Uh, you see these words while the earth remaineth seed time and harvest and cold and heat and summer and winter and day and night shall not cease while the earth as long as there's an earth there's several things you're gonna have seed time harvest cold and heat summer and winter night and day shall not cease I want to talk for a few moments from this thought know the rules look at his name and say know the rules you better you better you better know the rules you better know the rules some of you who know me know that I uh, I, I love athletics and grew up as an athlete football basketball baseball and track and um, actually had an opportunity to play college collegiate sports before entering to ministry so I've always loved sports and even now I love sports and I've been involved in it as a player, as a coach, and now as a parent and a fan. I tried to be active in Kamara and Kylan's life in their sporting events. I was their first coach in football, their first coach in basketball, and seeing them rise. I've always tried to be there. And I'm thankful that that uh, has been our, our, our moments to bond. Uh, from childhood has been over sports in many ways and uh, and I am an avid sports fan and a parent and I am the parent who has a lot of fun at the basketball and football games I am the one uh, that if this not refereed correctly you're gonna know I'm in the stands <laughs> never to be mean-spirited or hateful or never to be offensive or derogatory toward the refs, but I will be vocal. And yesterday I had an opportunity uh, to express my vocality. Uh, my son Kylan uh, was playing with his high school team in Hogansville, Georgia. And they were playing some larger boys and they had played a, an overtime game, two overtimes on Friday night. They were a little lethargic and they worked back to get in the game at the end of the third quarter, something interesting happened. One of the players from the other team was driving down the basket on the left side of the basket, and he shot the ball. And he shot the ball, and the ball didn't hit the rim. It didn't hit the backboard. 
He shot it, and it completely went over the rim without touching the rim of the backboard. And he ran up under the goal and caught it and put the ball back in the basket. And when that happened, my own lens and my vocality began to uh, become very expressive because whenever I played basketball, those of you who know basketball, when you shoot the ball, uh, what has to happen is that ball needs to touch the rim or the backboard in order for the person to have shot it, to retrieve it and put it back up. And so he shot the ball on the left side without it hitting the rim or the backboard or being blocked. He went up under the basket, caught it, and put it back up, and the referees didn't say a word. And at that moment, my full Afrocentricity <laughs> went into full gear, and I began to express my displeasure with the referee. And over and over for the end of that third quarter and for the entire fourth quarter, uh, my, my rage and my displeasure was hurled at that particular ref every time he came down the court. I made it known <laughs> that he missed that call in the third quarter. And when the game was over, I was waiting for him. Seriously. But, but not, not, not mean-spiritedly, not, you know, it's, and it's all in fun and banter and competitive, but I wanted to have a conversation with him uh, to check to see had he had his eyes checked, did he miss the call, or, because we went back and forth, and in the fourth quarter, he said to me, if I keep talking, he was going to throw me out of the game. And you know, when you tell me that, that just makes my Afrocentricity even the more revel relevant. So I began to go at him more, and so unfortunately, he left when the game was over. And I didn't get a chance to have a conversation. It was all in love and all in banter. And then after, after the game was over on my drive back home, I was talking to Cotton about that same place. He said, well, Daddy, you do know that they changed the rules. <laughs> and that in high school now, you can shoot the ball. And the ball doesn't have to touch the rim or the backboard in order for the shooter to get it and put it back up. He said, I heard you saying that throughout the entire fourth quarter. And I, and I almost said something to you, but I just figured I'd just let you get it out and we'll talk about it after the game. I said, so you really let me make a fool out of myself for 30 minutes. And he said this to me. He said, it's not my responsibility to teach you the rules. You are a student of the game. You are knowledgeable of the game. And I figured if you were talking that much that you could at least hit Google. I figured I'd talk to you because I had to stay focused on the game. My job was to stay focused on the game. Your responsibility before you spoke was to know the rules. And right there, my homiletical antennas <laughs> went into full gear. Because the question, how many of us have been regurgitating in our minds plays of 2022 and 2021 and 2020 and prior and fussing at God, and fussing at life, and fussing at somebody who broke your heart, and fussing at a boyfriend, a girlfriend, or a relative, or a coworker about a play that you deemed a foul, or a penalty, or inappropriate in life. And the reality is you have sometimes, even like me, been mad at God because you didn't make the basket. And you're wondering why has God forsaken? You're crying out to God, why me? Why me? And God is not responding. And God says, my responsibility is to keep my eye on the sparrow. Your responsibility is to know the rules. And today, brothers and sisters, as we're in 2023, one of the things I want to say to us is that we don't know the rules often in terms of how God works. Because God often works through what's called systems. Can somebody say systems? Uh, God works through systems. For instance, when you notice the, the, the sky, when you notice what is above us, the whole universe is comprised of systems. You have what's called the solar system. 
You have the lunar system. You, ha you have the interplanetary system. You have the Milky Way. You have the galaxies. The whole constellation operates through systems. Are y'all going to help me here? Brothers and sisters, even the human body is comprised of nothing but systems. Systems like the respiratory system, the nervous system, the digestive system, the endocrine system, the reproductive system, the circulatory system, the skeletal system, the intergaminatory system, the muscular system, the lymphatic system, the urinary system, the immune system, the excretory system, the musculoskeletal system. The whole body is comprised of systems. And then there are certain laws that are immutable or mutable laws that govern the whole universe and in order to know how it works like the body like the constellations you and i have to know the laws that govern and regulate our activity you have laws like there that that's that's something called the laws of thermodynamics then you have what's called the laws of motion the laws of exponents the laws of physics the laws of robotics, the laws of gravity, the laws of logarithms. The whole earth is comprised of systems. And the challenge for you and I, brothers and sisters, and there's so many others I could mention here, uh, but the problem is we often try to operate without knowledge of the system. And there is a law or a system that governs our lives that many of us have failed to really understand. And I believe that it's possible that we have not reaped or gained or grown the way we like because of our unfamiliarity with or lack of knowledge or understanding about how this system works. And the system I want to talk about today is a system that mention, is mentioned here in, in Genesis 8.22. And what Moses says here is that while the earth remaineth, you have several things that are going to remain as long as you're in earth. But one thing I want you to learn, he says, is the law, is the system, the rule of seed time and harvest. Somebody say seed time and harvest. It's, it's a law. It's a principle. And I want to break this law down for you. I just want to give you four quick things about it. Because this whole thing about laws, immutable laws, so much I want to share with you over the next uh, several months about this. And, but this whole law rule, this whole system of seed time and harvest, what is it about? First of all, I want to, I want to share with you that it has what's called an agricultural hermeneutic agricultural what the writer here is speaking of is after the flood which we preached about last week that after the flood that God was giving Noah and his sons Shem Ham and Japheth the, under, the, the, the understanding and the responsibility of planting in the earth the ground had, be, had, had become dry after the flood and what God was saying to them is, listen, as long as you're in this earth now, what I need you to do is take dominion. And from an agricultural perspective, I need you to understand that you have to plant seeds and be involved in farming. What God did for Adam in Genesis chapter 2, God gave Adam uh, planted trees and said, of every tree of the garden, thou mayest freely eat. That's in Genesis 2.16. But the trees had been destroyed for the most part at this point, and God is saying, you're going to have to till the ground in order for you to eat. It has an agricultural principle that Noah, you and your boys have got to put seed in the ground. You got to plant collards, you got to plant turnips, you got to plant tomatoes, and you got to understand how to work with nature, how to till the field, how to get the soil ready, 
understanding the laws of vegetation because if you're going to be sustained for the rest of your life, you have to understand the agricultural principle of seed, time, and harvest. you got to put something in the ground, and then when you put it in the ground, you have to wait for it to, to, to go through the various stages uh, uh, where, where it germinates, where it is rooted, and in, in the season it's able to produce. you got to understand how that works. It's an agricultural principle, an agricultural law. But, but secondly, let me share this with you. It, all ha it also has life and leadership lessons. Life and leadership lessons. You got to have the importance of seed time and harvest. It's a life lesson. Now, what does he mean by this? He, the principle, the metaphor, what he's saying here is that just like the farmer has to put seed in the ground, get the seed, plant the seed, till the ground, water it, de-weed it, that in life, you and I also need to know that seed time and harvest is a life principle. What does he mean by that? It means whatever you're trying to do in life, seed time and harvest is a rule that you got to abide by. What are you saying? Uh, okay, those of you who are in school, you just don't go to college and enroll one day and graduate the next. The principle of seed time and harvest is a life principle even in your educational endeavors. In order to, in order to get the harvest of a diploma, you got to have the dedication of seed time in your studies. In order to graduate in four years or five years like me and some others of you who are on that red shirt program, uh, you're gonna know, you got to learn when to party, when not to party. When to study, when to go to add drop period. And if you went to an HBCU, you know what that really means. Oh, thank God for my HBCU experience. But y'all know sometimes it can be challenging to say the least. You, you got to go through the seed time and harvest of financial aid and add drop periods. And back in my day, it took you three, four days sometime to get a class. I wish somebody would talk to me who, who, who wouldn't embarrass to tell the story. You stay in line all day long sometimes to, to get one class and get to the front and they say, well, your money ain't paid up in the office and you want to go Taekwondo on, on everybody in the financial aid office. But, but here's what you got to understand. The principle of seed time and harvest is operative. You don't get the return without being engaged in seed time. And this is a very relevant word, particularly for this present generation. A lot of millennials and Gen Zers, I think a minute of them understand this. They think you go on Instagram one day and you can be rich the next. And, and sometimes entitlement and thinking that things happen overnight. A few people have made it big off of social media, right? Uh, but, but, but now everybody their mama wants to get a podcast and think that they got something to say and many tomorrow they're going to have 100,000 followers. It doesn't work like that. In life, I have to understand, here is my moment to plant, here is my moment to reap. Now, I want to say this because some of you right now are listening to this message and you hate your job. You hate that you went to school and you majored in this. And now you're at a crossroad in your life. You're in your 30s, you're in 40s, and you're looking at what you've done the previous 20 years. You wonder, man, why did I spend all my time with this? And you, you will walk away from your job today if you could find something that paid you a commensurate wage. You go to a place that you really don't want to be there. You got visions that have come alive and other things you want to do. And what happens sometimes, if you're not careful, we, we, we omit the rule and the system of seed time and harvest. That sometimes I have to till the ground and get my hands dirty in something that, that I may not even like. But I may have to do this for a moment in order for me to be positioned to get to the harvest that I desire in life. And one of the worst things you can do is plant a seed in the ground and then forget about it and abandon it because it has not yet come to fruition and realization as quickly as you would like. It's a rule, it's a principle in life. Often you and I get frustrated because it's, it, it's taking too long. But you can't just holler at the seed 
and, and just name it and claim it and the seed is coming out tomorrow. The seed has to go through its process of development. It has to be buried. Dirt has to be put on it. You got to allow it to, it does best when it's on the ground. But, you, but the question is, is it a life lesson for me? Do I think I'm just supposed to graduate one day and five years later I walk into my harvest? Didn't work like that. Sometimes where you are right now in life may be the thing that subsidizes your vision tomorrow. You may have to work at what you don't like in a minute in order to position yourself to get to the vision God has for you tomorrow and stop putting yourself on a time frame and a time calendar with everybody else because you're watching somebody else's story and it looks like they have made it. They got there quicker than you and you we graduated at the same time and yet he's a corporate exec and I'm still here on a lower level position or we, we played, we were cheerleaders together and now she's married with the two kids and the picket fence with the dog and the cat and, and, and she got a girl and a boy and a husband and here I am with no boyfriend still in my one bedroom apartment and you're looking at her life and comparing your life to her life and wondering why aren't you at that level here's why number one because you're still in seed time and number two it because it's also because you could be a jealous of a harvest that you're only seeing filled through the lenses of filters on Instagram. You don't know what they're going through on that side and all the Hades they may be catching to keep everything you see. Sometimes the grass isn't greener on the other side. That's astroturf over there and you also don't know how high the water bill is over on that side. Sometimes you got to say, God, give me the wisdom to understand where I am in my life right now and speak clearly to me. If this is my seed time, if this is the time of planting, if this is a time of tilling and toiling, and we don't like this. We live in a right now microwave society. We want everything instantly. We want our food instantly. We want our money instantly. We want our promotion instantly. We want everything right now because we live in a microwave society and not a crock pot society. The best meal you could ever eat is not something that somebody bought in Publix and put a box in a microwave. The best meal you ever eat is when grandmama slave over the stove. Y'all not going to help me preach here. Lord, I went to went with some of my family uh, Thanksgiving two years ago and got there and, 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 and underfixed my plate and brought the food. And I was looking at the, at the collard greens. Well, these collard greens don't look right. He didn't have no meat in them. It looked ashy. I'm so, you, somebody know what I'm talking about. I'm like, why are these collard greens? And then, and then, you know, when I like collard greens, it's, thanks, it's Thanksgiving. You know, how, you, know, you know what you're supposed to do on Thanksgiving, right? So I'm eating the collard greens. I'm like, is these, is this, is this, is this, is this mussels? Is this, these ain't collard, is this mustard? This ain't, what is this? And I didn't notice the under kept saying, be, she, she kept telling me to be quiet. She just kind of, and I, but I, I didn't catch them. I'm like, what is it? But everybody would get quiet. I was like, what, what's going on with the greens? I mean, y'all got any onions? I, I need to cut some onions, some tomatoes, something, some vinegar. See, something is not just quite right with the greens. And this thing, I'm just perturbed. And I understand afterwards that they were greens that they bought in a can. This is no lie. And somebody in our family brought canned collard greens to Thanksgiving. Now you probably say I should be thankful because people in the streets, they, 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 you just, you, you just ungrateful because people homeless would love to have them collard greens. And y'all just be thankful. Somebody else is worse off than you. You complain with a loaf of bread on me. You be quiet. On Thanksgiving, I don't want no, th no collard greens that's bought at no grocery. Call me unselfish, call, call me selfish, call me proud, call me whatever you want to call me, and I'm just going to still tell you the truth. I don't like collard greens in a can that you bought at the store for Thanksgiving. <laughs> call me mean all you want, and, and, and some of you who say, call me mean and turn me out, you know you lying because you know you feel this, so you're trying to be spiritual. I'm just being real. I want somebody to cut them. I want somebody to put them in the, in, the, in, in, in the water and wash them. Am I talking to somebody right? And cut them real good and see. That's how I want mine cooked on, 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 on Thanksgiving. 
The best collard greens are not bought in a box. What they call them things? What they call them? Glory. Every wife that's cooking your husband glory collard greens for his birthday, I rebuke you right now in Jesus' name. The Spirit of God is not in you. And we're going to cast that demon out you at this altar for this service away. The only glory we want is the glory we give to God. Am I talking right? Glory. That's what it's called. Glory. Now, the difference between glory collard greens and greens that somebody took the time to go to the store, go to the market and buy them and cut them and put them in a pot. Am I talking right here? And here's what God told me to tell us. In life, a lot of us have a glory collard green mentality. Because you want your blessing in a glory collard green way and are not willing to endure the process in the time. Seed time and harvest is a life lesson. And if you want it overnight, you, you're not going to know the rules and you may forget. You may forfeit your blessing because you don't understand as long as the earth. It's a principle. It's a system. It's a rule. It's also a leadership lesson. As a leader, if you're on the job, you got people working under you, as a parent, it's a leadership lesson. That means, here's what it means. That means every time you do something good, you are, what John Maxwell says, you're making a deposit in your leadership bank. When you do something good to those who are under you, when they trust you, you're making a deposit in your leadership bank. When you say we're going to do something and it's successful, that's a deposit in your leadership bank. If you renovate the building and buy new equipment, that's a deposit in your leadership bank. Because every now and then, you may not do something so good. You may do some things that your employees don't like, your coworkers don't like. And when that happens, when you make a decision that's not a good one, that's called a withdrawal from your leadership bank. And so what happens sometimes in leadership, we, we make more withdrawals from our account than we do deposits. And some of us on your job, if you are a supervisor or a boss or owner and your employees, all of them have checked out and don't want to be with you, it could be because either they are selfish or it could be because your leadership account is now insufficient. And you've made more withdrawals from the account than deposits. So in life and in leadership, you got seed time. That's when you put it in the ground. You got harvest. My question to you, where are you in your process in your life and leadership? Number three, it is a relational system. Seed time and harvest. I'm almost finished. I'll pick it up next week. It's relational. What do you mean by that? In every relationship, seed time and harvest is a rule or a system that governs your relationship. What do you mean? That means seed time, that's when you put in. Harvest, that's when you withdraw. Okay? Those of you who are dating somebody, those of you who, who think about being serious with somebody, don't make that determination until you check out your relational account how much have you put in invested seed time how much have you gotten out harvest there are people that you can be connected to that all they want to do is withdraw from you there are people in your life all they want is what they can get out of they want to reap the harvest of connection with you but the problem is, the people who are always drawing from you never replenish or put anything back in you. In relationships, you have two kinds of people often. You have givers and takers. And sometimes you don't know the difference until you've got your emotions all caught up and you realize I've been the one doing all the seed time, all the planting, and this person has been the one who's doing all the withdrawals. You and I need to evaluate every relationship in our lives and ask ourselves the question, do you only hear from them when they want something? Lord have mercy. That, that's personal for somebody. <laughs> but there are people in your life, no matter what you do, how much you give, it'll never be enough. And they will suck all the life out of you. And they will kill you 
and then show up at your funerals crying he died of natural causes. Y'all quiet on me here, you quiet on me here. What I'm saying to you today, don't be the person who's always taking from relationships and never offer anything. And it doesn't have to be monetary. It can be a note. It can be a positive message. It can be, can it help you clean? Can I run an errand? Don't be the person who thinks that everything is entitled for you to get. And too many of our young people are like that. They want everything in return but don't want to be involved in seed time. It's a principle in life. What are you doing relationally? In your marriage, in your relationships, in your romantic, what is seed time? How is seed time and harvest manifesting itself relationally? Do you ever give? Do you ever take out the dinner? Do you ever say, here's a flower? Your hair looks nice. What do you put in? Every man on the job knows when the hair's done and comes come, come the hair. You don't even know she can cut it, she can color it, she can get a mohawk, and you don't even know the difference. Don't say nothing. Because you never put anything in emotionally. There's no emotional investment. But you want everything out. You want her to work, clean, cook, take care of the kids, wash the dishes, help pay the bills, do everything else, and then want her to be a gymnast at, in, at the midnight hour. Want all the harvest, but there's no seed. What that means is maybe you ought to go and let me help you with the dishes. Let me take the trash out. Help me, make, let me go get some groceries. Because we always want. But are you putting in as much? Or is it all about what you can get out of the relationship? Because at some point, it's going to be possible your, your, your relational bank is going to be withdrawn. And once it's withdrawn, both of you have a deficit, and somebody's going to want to look for that deficit to be filled somewhere else. Where are, you, where are you? Where are you relationally? Are you the giver or are you the taker? Is it all about you and what you want? Have you ever said, I'm going to give up my right for somebody that's wrong? I chuckled up there, I heard on, 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 on radio that a guy had been dating a girl for 10 years. I'm almost finished. And after 10 years of dating her, he decided to finally ask her to marry him. And she was driving in the car. He pulled the ring out while she was driving and decided to propose to her while she was driving in the car. And then he recorded her response. And her response is not something I can say in church today. She was so offended. She was so hurt. Because after 10 years of dating, she said, you put no thought into this. That you're going to ask me to marry you while I'm driving in the car? Keep your ring. I don't want it. His perspective was, no thought. I thought enough about it to go and buy your ring. I thought enough about it to spend money. I thought enough about it to ask you. And, and so you had two people in a relationship. She felt she had given more than she was receiving. He felt she was ungrateful. And, and, and the story ends that that relationship ended. I don't know what's happened. I hope they, that relationship ended because not because of the marriage, but because of how he proposed. It's interesting. We can talk more about that later time. But the question is, what I saw deeper was she had given out more. Basically, in the end of the story, she had given out more than she was re receiving, and she felt that she deserved more. And in her mind, she had given out more than she received. Who are you in that equation? I'm finished. One more. It's agricultural. It's a life leadership principle. It's relational. Then fourth and finally, it's financial. I'm done. It's a financial principle. Seed time and harvest. What is he saying here? The financial hermeneutic here is this. Many of us want to receive from God. Our hands are always out to get from God. Bless me indeed. Shine on me. Pass me not. Let some drops. Give me victory. Bring me healing. Anointing fall on me. Most, uh, a whole lot of our songs are always petitions and requests to get from God. Question we have to ask ourselves, do we sing more about getting from God 
than we do about giving to God. There are a few, song, few, a few songs we have, like, I surrender all. I give myself away so you can use me. Lord, I'm available to you. We have some songs that bespeak of our giving of ourselves to God, but I would hazard to believe that, that the majority of our prayers and our petitions and our songs are, are, are about us coming out, us getting deliverance, us getting blessings, our families being blessed. The majority of our prayers have nothing to do, uh, the majority of our prayers have limited statements about what we want to do to bless others. Most of the time, our prayers are filled with asking and begging sessions from God. We're more on the harvest side of expectation than we are on the planting side of the investing. When it comes to worship, when it comes to giving, financially, which side of that are you on? Are you on the side that only wants to get from God? But don't understand the importance of me giving to God. When God says, bring you all the tithes into the storehouse, that they may meet me meet in my house. We jump by that and we jump straight to it. He's going to open the windows of heaven. Going to pour me out a blessing. We jump straight to it. It's going to be big. Eyes haven't seen. Ears haven't heard. No, he's able to do exceeding the bundle above all we can. Too often we're on the harvest side of the equation. When was the last time you prayed to ask God to help you to do something for somebody else? Or prayed that God bless you so you can be a blessing to the kingdom? When the last time you prayed, God, you know, when I'm asleep, give me neurological dispensation so I know what to play for that billion. And if I hit the billion, Lord, I'm going to pay off the church. I'm going to pay off the parking lot. I'm going to help pastor retire. Uh, when he, when he wants to retire, we're going to rid my... I'm going to do all that stuff, God. I'm going to bless the older people. I'm going to set up something. Uh, I, I'm going to set up a legacy for the youth department. I'm going to put the elevators in the church. We're going we're gonna to do a shuttle to the AU Center and the Emirates. And Lord, and I'm going to do all that. And once I do all that, then I buy me a vacation house in Aruba or, or Miami. Many of us it's humorous, but many of us don't think about that aspect. And here's what God says to me instead of you. And it hit me so, so square in the eyes. Do it? Is it? Are you where you want to be financially because you don't, have, you don't know the rules? Ask the people, are they living beneath my best for them because they don't know the rules? They all want the harvest without appreciating the importance of seed time. If you're not willing to invest in seed time to God, if you're not willing to invest in putting a budget together, if you're not willing to invest in getting all of your bills to check what the interest rates are, knowing what you owe on each one, knowing which, how to pay which ones off, if you're not looking at it to put the time in to organize your finances, you will, never become a, you will never become great because whenever your outgoing is greater than your incoming, your upkeep is going to be your downfall. You've got to be willing to make some decisions. You've got to assess it. You've got to be honest. You've got to look at it and say, here's why you can't keep doing what you want to do and just thinking it's going to be okay. You've got to assess where you are. Where you are in life right now may not be where you want to be. You may have, you, you may have to, some things may have dropped. Some things may be down. You may have to take less money, but you can't still live the same way. You can't do the same thing. Your company may have taken less in the pandemic. So what are you doing those? You can't keep doing the same thing. You got to look at it and be honest. You can't act like everything is the same. You got to assess it and be honest. If you got a Honda salary, you can't drive a BMW car. And you got to do the hard work of looking at it and say, God, here's where I am. You will never get the outcome, the harvest, until you do the dirty work of looking at this thing and assessing it and saying, here is where I am. Or oh, I need some help doing this and figuring this out. Do you know the rules? Are you still caught up in how everybody looks at you? 
still trying to be sharp. Honey, she was sharp in church. Sharp and broke. Ooh, that, that's a nice pocketbook. $1,500 pocketbook, but nothing in it but light bulbs. Lint and old peppermint. Fingerprints. Lint. Old peppermint. Sometimes you may have to you may have to leave Gucci and go to guess. Mike can't do Louis. Might have to do Levi. May not be able to do Prada. You can do pay less. But guess what? You'll sleep better at night. You have more peace. You realize I got a vision of where I want to be in life. And, I, and if this is where I want to be, I got to go through the process of seed, time, and harvest to get myself where I want to be. What God told me to tell you today is I, there are some things I want that he wants to do in all of our lives. But a lot of times we want to jump straight to the manifestation of harvest and the, getting the blessing. And here's what God says. God says to me, to tell you this. Tell all of us this. I've got the power to give you this, the harvest. I control the harvest, but you control the seed time. You missed, you missed it. I control the harvest, God says, but you control seed time. God says, I can turn water into wine, but you got to fill the water pots up with water. I got medicine in my garment to heal your issue of blood, but you got to reach out and touch. I can make your walls of Jericho come tumbling down, but you got to march around them seven times. Y'all quiet on me here. I can heal your eyes, blind man, but you got to go and wash in the pool of Siloam. Y'all quiet on me here. Man, I can heal your marriage and put your marriage back together, but you got to stop hanging out with your frat brothers on Monday, playing cards on Tuesday, uh, playing bitwits on Wednesday, golf on Thursday, going to the club on Friday, and, ex and coming home at 2 o'clock in the morning and expect everything to be cool. Young lady, I can, I, I, I can help him get his love back and get his eyes and get his eyes and his mentality back, but every now and then you got to help him. Help him. When your husband's worked all day, he don't want to come over here and moaning and groping and, and complaining all day and take the trash out. Every now and then, meet him with something sweet at the door. Tell him you love him. Every now and then, have the bath water room with some bubbles in it and some flowers some, some and some rose petal. Y'all quiet on me here. You want to rush home, rush home from what? Seven days a week, you got flannel pajamas on, mismatched socks, all on your high shoes, not seam on your face, and a rag around your head, and you want him to come home, come home for what? You ain't been to Victoria's Secret and bought nothing. Buy something sheer, buy something to look through, buy something that, come on now, help the brother out. So sick of these bunnies. Everywhere you go, bun it in the hospital, bun it in the airplane, bun it in the grocery store. Start a new frat. Take off the bunnies. <laughs> but you get my but you get my point, don't you? It's humorous, but the point I'm trying to make: seed time, you got to put in, get your hands dirty, put some work in, and then you get a return. You got to know the rules. Some of us are too selfish, too about ourselves. And we're gonna be in the same place this time next year if you don't know the rules. And ask yourself, 
how am I appropriating this system, this rule in my life? Agriculturally, life leadership, relationally, and financially. Are you incorporating seed, time, and harvest, this system in your life? If not, don't be mad with God in December. Because you shot the ball and didn't hit the rim of the backboard and didn't know you can go on the other side and catch it and put it back up. It's not God's fault that we don't know the rules. He put the rules in the rule book. I want you to stand with me right quickly. Now I'm, I'm going to ask a question. I'm going to let you go. I want you to be honest with me. Hold the doors for a second. How many of you in your relationships, you are the selfish one? Hold your hand up. Hold your hand up. You are the selfish one. Hold your hand up. I saw one hand. I saw three hands. Hold your hand up. If you're the selfish one, thank you. Hold your hand up. Two. 400 folk over here in two hands. Okay, all right. Thank you for your honesty. May God bless y'all for your honesty. Thank you for your honesty. How many of you are the givers in your relationship? Thank you. How many of you can, can how many of you had a propensity to be both? Okay. Yeah, I'm letting you go. Here's the exercise. I was praying this morning, the Lord said, do it. Ask them to look at their vision for this year. Number one, what is your vision for this year? Number two, what is going to be seed time and what, what harvest look like? So a lot of times we do these vision boards. The pictures on the vision board, that represents harvest. But rarely on the vision board do we put beside that picture the seed time that it's going to take to manifest the picture. The picture just don't pop out the sky. Something has to happen in order to lead you to the process of the manifestation of the picture. So what I want to ask you is what, what do you believe in God for for this year? What do you want to see December 31st, 2023? Now, when you see that, now ask yourself, what am I doing every day in seed time? That's going to help me get to this desired outcome, December 31st. And it's got to be more than fasting and praying. Okay, y'all don't, y'all don't, okay, okay, you don't, you don't, y'all don't hear me. You don't, you don't, y'all don't, y'all. Let me tell you something. I believe in the tongue. I believe in death and life in the tongue. I believe in positive declarations. I believe in speaking those things as though they're not, as though they were. I had some health goals for 2022. I accomplished them. I got more for 2023. And you know what I believe? Part of my problem has been I've been so much in the past about just praying and speaking it. That come the time when you're praying and speaking, ain't faith, is foolishness. What good is praying for a better job and you haven't got a new resume? It just ain't falling out the sky. As much as I would like, I wish I'd get up in the morning and look at my stomach and say, fat, come off now in Jesus' name. I send this belly back to the pits of hell in Jesus' name. I shout, ta, ta, ta. It don't work like that. I wish y'all helped me here for a moment. We all want to get to the harvest, but what are you willing to do? See. Bow your heads with a word of prayer. God, I thank you for today. That many of us have been people of faith in our mouths only. 
with expectation, but not dedicating ourselves to the process. So I pray today that for everybody who's got a goal, whether it's a new job, whether it's a new place they want to live, Lord, help us to realize that it's a process. That sometimes you can bless immediately, but sometimes you bless us in process as we go. Help us to be self-aware and help us to trust you through our process. I believe that where we are right now is not all you have for us, but help us to be mature and work with you in process. I pray, Lord, on this day, that right now in January, I pray that by December 31st, 2023, we won't be people who just spoke with our mouths and prayed and fasted, but give us a plan, a strategy, put people around us that we're working toward what we, we want us to be. Agriculturally, life and leadership, relationally and financially, and even spiritually and physically. In every aspect of life, I pray that you bring us to that moment of harvest. You control the harvest, but you help us to now control the seed time. Help us to be active and become not weary in well-doing, for in due season we'll reap if we faint not. I speak, I decree and declare, for college students, for business owners, for, for parents, for employees, for employers, that God, by the end of this year, we would have looked at his life, and because we knew the rule, we would see tangible growth in our lives in 2023. Tangible growth, tangible growth. We're going to grow this year. We're going to grow this year. We're going to be better this time next year than we are this year because we know the rule of seed time and harvest. In Jesus' name, amen. If you believe that, I want you to clap your hands right now and give God praise. Ministers, y'all come forward quick. I got to let y'all go. I got to let y'all go. Listen, before we go, I'm going to do two things. We're going to do our invitation, our offering, we out of here. Listen, you can't be saved without you doing your part. God controls the harvest. He sent Jesus to die. He did his part. Now you got to do your part. What is that? Open up your heart. Let him come in. Today, are you sure you've accepted the Lord Jesus as your Lord and your Savior? The first step to life is realizing I got to have Jesus Christ because he gives me abundant life. He's I've come, you might have life. If you're here, you're not saved. If you're here, you're not saved. And you want to accept Jesus. Listen, I don't care what you do. Nothing will work if Christ is not the center. On Christ, the solid rock I stand. Everything else is sinking sand. If you're not sure if you die that you're going to heaven, I want you to come, I want you to come down. Because one time, he one day heaven is coming. It's going to be our harvest. Only for those who have accepted Christ in seed time. So if you're here, you don't have Christ or you don't have a church home. You grew up in church, you're straight away. If you're watching me live, you want to be saved, you want to connect. Information is on the screen. If you're in this building, would you come down right now and say, Preach, I want, a, I want a church. I want Christ. I want to make some changes in my life. I want you to come down here right now. Man, woman, come on, come on. I want you to come down. I see you coming. I see you coming. I want you to come down. I want you to come down right now. I want you to come down right now. I want you, is that another who wants to come? If you're online, information's on the screen. I want Christ. I want a church. I want to make some changes in my life right now. Come on. I'm, I'm waiting on you. Come on. I'm waiting on you. I'm waiting on you. Come on. Come on. He will give you brand new life. My, my. New life abundantly. Oh, come. Yeah. My, my, my. Is that another? Come on. My, 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 too. Y'all give God a hand clap of praise. Come on, clap your hands and give God praise. I said clap your hands and give God praise. Clap your hands and give God praise. Glory to God. Hallelujah. All right, listen. We're getting ready, we're getting ready to leave now. And uh, a couple of things as we leave. I want to thank everybody who supported our first Vibe experience. Man, it was absolutely amazing. If you attended, it was amazing. The next one's going to be on February the 5th at noon in the atrium. Uh, and the tickets are available now. 
Uh, we have tables available and tickets available. You can go to the website, hohatl.org, to get your tables and ticket. Or you can text the vibe to 678-201-1351. We will have brunch, live entertainment, dancing. It was a glorious, splendid event. Greg Kirkland and, 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 and Zeblin Ellis and Wendy Jackson and the team, they did an amazing job. It was second to none, y'all. And uh, I, so February 5th, make sure you get your tickets. Now, we only have limited space. I want you to get your tickets, get your table. It's going to be a, a great experience. You don't have to go downtown. You don't have to go down there. I'm told that it's, I didn't know Copeland's had brunch. That's when you know you've been in church too long because you don't know what brunch spots. They said Copeland's got one of the best brunch spots in Atlanta, right? But it's $49. Like breakfast at Barney's, they say it's got a, it's amazing. It's, it's amazing. Breakfast at Barney's, y'all been there before? It says amazing. But you had been in line an hour and a half. They say Papa Do's got brunch. It's amazing. It's forty dollars a person. That's up four hundred. How many y'all been to Papa Do's brunch? Okay, I said that's why you ain't been to church because you had brunch. You had, br you had brunch, but it's all right. I'm jealous. That's okay. I'm jealous. But that's okay because now we got divide. I ain't got to go. I go right next door, and the food is just as good. And I can, we got singing and dancing, and entertainment, comedy. It's going to be next door. So trust me, you're going to thank me. And so the vibe experience makes Now today, as we're giving, you can give today by text to give. I want to thank you for all your support of our ministry. Because of your support, we made major progress even in the pandemic. You can give today through text. You can text H-O-H-A-T, House of Hope Atlanta Tithe. The 678-201-1351 or H-O-H-A-O, -O, House of Hope Atlanta Offering, 678-201-1351 or H-O-H-A-G-F, that's God First, that's Mission 2020, that's our building fund program that's ongoing, to 678-201-1351. You can give by cash app, information is on the screen, dollar sign H-O-H-A-T-L. You can give through Zelle, that information is also going to be on the screen, it's finance at gtrbc.org. So text to give, cash app through Zelle. You can give through the website. Log on the website, hohatl.org. Click the giving links, follow the prompts accordingly. Or today, you can give online as, as you're watching online. Click that QR code. And if you're in this building, you want to give through a check or envelope, a check or cash, lift your hands. The ushers will get you an envelope. And on your way out, you can just give your offering as you're leaving. On your way out, you can give your offering as you're leaving. On your way out, give your offering as you're leaving. Amen? On your way, off, on your way out. If you're watching online, you can send it in to the P.O. Box, P.O. Box 361-499, Decatur, Georgia, 30036. Again, P.O. Box 361-499, Decatur, Georgia, 30036. I saw Martin Williams earlier. Your mama here? Your mama? Marty and his mama, Ms. Ms. Williams, they're here. Her husband of 36 years uh, passed away on Friday. And he's, he's been dealing with Parkinson's for the past five years. And it's been a real strain, a uh, difficult time. But they're both in worship this morning after the, her husband and, uh, and his daddy passed. I, I'm well, praying for y'all here. And uh, I, I want y'all, as, as we leave, we're going to pre I want y'all come up front. We're going to be praying for y'all for as you leave. Uh, I don't know if Jordan, is Jordan Jakes here? I don't know if Jordan here. I thought he told me he was coming this morning. One of our members is playing for UNLV in football. He's going to be going back out to Las Vegas. He plays football for UNLV. He's going to be leaving Tuesday. And I met with him. I don't think he's here this morning. But uh, we're getting ready to leave. Amen. So on your way out, I want you to give. I want you to give. Now, remember, I just taught you to rule the principle. Agricultural, life and leadership, relational, financial, seed time and harvest. If you want to get something from God, don't just be on the receiving end. But realize if you sow sparingly, you'll reap sparingly. If you sow bountifully, you'll reap bountifully. Give seed time, and it shall be given to you. Good measure, pressed down and shaken together. Run harvest. Seed time and harvest go hand in hand. Don't miss God's movement in your life. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Father, I thank you that you are the God of peace. 
you're the God of comfort. That even when our bodies go back to the earth as seeds, that they're going to be reaping new bodies. Thank you, Mr. Williams, Lord, who, who loved you, who stood with his family, 36, through the good and bad, his rights and wrongs. And thank you that you've called him out of his pain. And Lord, and the stress of caregiving has been, been on Ms. Williams and been on Marty and their family, Lord, that you, you let them be faithful to the point of death. Thank you for their faithfulness to, to your son. And Lord, would you just give back to them in this moment, the love they've given to so many, would you give it back to, to Ms. Williams now, who has to figure out how to go on with the rest of her life after 36 years of marriage. But you're going to keep her. Because she's sown so many seeds. Now let her reap the harvest of love and comfort and peace and community and fellowship and relationship. Reciprocate it. Lord, be with Marty now, who's been an encourager to me and so many all over the world. Lord, Marty always had a smile, always blessing people. Now, Lord, would you bless him? Would you let him reap the harvest of what he's done to inspire? What a wonderful young man who loves you. Now, Lord, would you cover and keep them? Keep the Williams family. Anybody else in here today, Lord, that we don't know, surround them with your love and your mercy and your grace. And as we leave this place today, help us to leave knowing the seed time and harvest. Help us to know the rules so we can be what you've called us to be. This, this is from this place, but never from your presence. And now, unto him who's able to do exceeding abundant of all you can ask or think, according to the power that's at work within each of us. Now be with us, O oh Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Parents, please come get your kids out of the uh, chapel area. Parents, please come get your kids out of the chapel area. I love y'all. We'll see you next week. I love y'all. Have a great week. Now, I love you. Have a great week. 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 Girl, how you doing? I didn't know that was you over there. Good to see you. Hey, family. It's Pastor Jen. And listen, our senior pastor preached a powerful word from Genesis 8 and 22, know the rules. And he challenged us to think about our vision board, our goals, and what we're expecting God to do and decide what's seed time and what's harvest. So you know what I need you to do in the comments. I want you to post right now what you're believing God for and what's seed time and what is harvest. 